Hey and welcome back. If you're looking at improving your milling machine, I think one of the most popular upgrades, apart from adding a digital readout, would be adding a power table feed. And that makes sense. It's the axis that you probably spend most of your time moving, so adding a motor to drive it makes a lot of sense. However, in my opinion, raising and lowering the head is a lot more tedious, and I spend a lot of time doing that. Especially on my mill, where the handle is inconveniently located on the very top of the column, and each turn of the hand wheel only moves it by one millimeter, means that a lot of my time is actually spent cranking the hand wheel. Now, it's not too bad when you're using smaller end mills, but it gets pretty tedious when it comes to drilling. As an example, this 10mm drill bit is over 100mm long, which means that I can be doing more than 100 cranks on the hand wheel to use it. And this is where adding a power Z feed or a power lift comes in. To power it, I'm going to be using this 12 volt DC motor with a 50 to 1 gearbox attached to it. This should be big enough to power my milling machine, but obviously if you have a bigger mill, you might want to get something a little bit bigger. This one here develops about 4.9 Newton meters of torque at 55 RPM, which is on par with some NEMA 34 stepper motors. Now originally I was planning on directly mounting the motor to the hand wheel drive, but it didn't look all that nice, so I quickly abandoned that option for something that looked a little bit nicer. So what I'll do is I'll unbolt the mill and pull off the back cover. In the back of the column, you can see the lead screw that raises and lowers the head. Now at the top, it connects to a bevel gear, which connects to the hand wheel. But at the bottom, there is a fair amount of space between the lead screw and the base of the column. And rather conveniently, it's big enough to fit the motor plus a coupler. Now before I get too far ahead of myself, I need to figure out if the motor can actually lift the mill's head. And if it does, is it fast enough? The bevel gear is a 2 to 1 reduction at the top, so the motor is going to be working twice as hard as it was on the hand wheel. Now the lead screw is a M26 by 2 trapezoidal thread. I don't have any internal trapezoidal thread cutters, and I don't really feel like grinding one up just for one job. So what I'll do is I'll use a 60 degree internal cutter, and I'll make it oversized, which usually works. and the motor is working just fine. According to the power supply, it's pulling just over four amps, which is well within the working load of this motor. So now that I know that it works, we can get on to modifying the machine. The first thing I need to do is modify the lead screw, which means removing it, which is something that I'd never done on this mill before. I lowered the head as far as it would go, and then I rested it on some wood. I did this to make sure that the head wouldn't drop once I removed the lead screw, because if it dropped, I'd need to find a way to lift or jack it up to reassemble the mill. I also had to drill a small hole in the top of the column to allow me to unscrew the lead screw, because there just wasn't enough space to unscrew it, and I couldn't lower the head any further. Now what I need to do is add a small standoff at the bottom of the lead screw to allow a coupler to be attached. The four jaw just wasn't doing a good enough job, so I switched over to the collet chuck to draw the hole. If you look closely, you can see a small step down on the front face of the part. Originally, I was intending to use it to help seat a coupler, which I was going to make from scratch. But unfortunately, that never came to be. I was heading out of state for the weekend, so I needed to get the mill back together so I could use it the following week. I'll finish machining the standoff, which will then get screwed and lock tighted into the bottom of the lead screw.
Now I have ordered a proper high torque coupler, but as an interim solution, what I'm gonna be doing is using one of these flexible shaft couplers that you'd see on a stepper motor. It's not exactly my first choice as they are made of aluminium and I have broken one or two of these in the past because they just don't take that much torque to break, but as long as I'm careful, it should work until I get the proper coupler. Next, I need to find a way to hold the motor in place. I could have used the mounting hole pattern on the gearbox, but the easiest solution was to make some sort of clamp or bracket, which I'll make from an old piece of aluminium. I need to make an offset hole which is just big enough for the DC motor. And the easiest way to do that was to use the boring head. I'll drill a hole through the column and then I'll screw the bracket in. And so far I'm really happy with how the project looks. Next I need to find a way to power the motor. I'll be using a Meanwell 6 amp 12 volt power supply and the great advantage to using this one is that it's small enough to be housed in the rear cover on the back of the column. Now if I am being completely honest, electronics and soldering is not a strong point for me. And given that it's been close to 7 or 8 years since I've used a soldering iron to wire up a circuit, I was giving this a 50-50 chance of working on the first go. The circuit itself is simple enough. The positive and the negative go to the middle pins of the toggle switch, and on each side, the positive and negative wires are switched. So when you toggle it one way, the motor spins one way, and when you toggle it the other way, the motor spins the other way. Simple enough, so I can't screw it up. The speed is going to be fixed, but from the test run, it looked to be running at a good speed, so I didn't need to worry about changing it. The toggle switch is going to be mounted to the front panel of the mill, which means I need to pass the wires through to the back. To route the wires through to the back, I've pushed through a piece of steel wire, and what I'll do is I'll tape the other wires to the steel, and then I'll pull it through, which pulls the other wires through to the back. I'll now drill a hole to mount the power supply, and then another one for the 240 volt power. And I'll also drill another hole so I can access the motor. And with that done, I'll quickly solder up the motor and make sure that it works. And before I close the back, I'll tightly put on a cable tie onto the 240 volt wire just to prevent the wire from being pulled out. You can always make a knot in the wire, but this works too. Now whilst doing this, it also occurred to me that I probably could have powered this from the existing 240 volt power, but I'd already drilled the holes and wired everything up, so I'm going to leave it the way it is. The final thing left to do is drill a hole in the front panel for the toggle switch and then screw it in. And with that done, we can now see if it works. And I gotta say, I am really impressed with how this project turned out. 
The motor is doing a great job at moving the head, and the head is moving a lot quicker than it would be than if I was cranking it manually. So now I'm able to use the power feed to move the head 90 or 90% 90 of the way, and then I can do the last 5% by hand. The hand wheel is obviously a little bit harder to turn than it was because I am turning against the gearbox, but that's not something that I'd worry about because if I am cranking it by hand, I'm only going to do one or two cranks to get to the last one or two millimetres. And that is about it for now. I'm really happy with how this project turned out, and I really wished that I'd done this a long time ago. Now that I have a power lift, a power table feed is now definitely going to be in the works sometime in the future. But until then, I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching, see you next week.